This is uh, Christian and Rachel with Townline Farms. Really, really appreciate you guys uh, for dialing in and chatting with us and kind of sharing your experience. Yeah, it's, uh, we it's... thank you for uh, creating a great product and um, speaking to us today. I'm Mike Bragsdale to introduce myself. Um, I started RPS and I'm one of the owners here. And so I really am excited to talk to you guys. Um, I'm really glad Valerie was able to reach out to you and you guys agreed to just have a quick chat with us today. Can you tell us a little bit about your farm and, and what you guys do there? Sure. So um, this is our second year operating here. Uh, I purchased the property in last January and um, we do a little bit of vegetable growing here in Connecticut, a uh, small vegetable stand. Um, and then we do fall activities. We do a corn maze for the kids and families around and um, we're, we're slowly getting into livestock. Um, and we do hay production and we actually do a little bit of maple syrup production too on the farm as well. Are you, so are you having to irrigate because of that or? or are we you are slowly to... irrigating. Well, I mean, with the garden, we're, we've been irrigating all along. That's what we use your pump for and then for running water on the farm as well. But um, we do irrigate the corn a little bit as, as well this year. So oh, not usually. Very nice. But... And then what, what got you interested in a solar pump? Um, do you have utility power there? Or there's other reasons you went with, with the solar in this case? So, I uh, um, I was looking around, we did the well, we got the grant for the well, and you know, it's, it's all just a startup for me with uh, money-wise, so we wanted to keep our costs down and running power onto the farm wasn't really in the budget this year. Mm -hmm. So I kept seeing advertisements for RPS, and I, you know, no one around here ever even knew about it. The people I talked to had no idea, and I figured I'd go out on a limb and, and, and try it. Um, well, we have, we, we have access to power. We're not too far off the road, but I, I figured that this would be a good place to start with something, you know, simple that we could see how solar would work for us. I mean, our barn's a little bit farther <laughs> off the road. So in the future, if I like the solar, uh, solar power, I was going to look more into doing systems for different applications around the farm. So oh, cool. Nice. And then you mentioned a grant. Did the, did the grant cover just the well, um, drilling or did it also cover some of the pump? So this grant was a micro grant, as they call it, from um, uh, American Farmland Trust. So it was a five thousand dollar micro grant. What was that process like to get a grant? Was that was that hard? Were the challenges, or was it pretty straightforward for uh, for the micro grant? But mm -hmm. this one was a simple kind of straightforward grant that we um, applied for. It focused on New England um, livestock producers. Oh, cool. um, that's what they were focusing on, and us being a protected farmer ready. Through Connecticut Farmland Trust, we figured we'd try um, an American Farmland Trust grant. Yeah, and I don't think there there weren't that many questions. A lot of them were pretty straightforward about what the use of the grant would be for, mm -hmm. um, our thoughts on sustainable agricultural practices, um, and uh, more things along the lines of livestock production, which is what this grant was specifically for, and it's specifically for our region. Um, but there's a bunch of different ones depending on where you are in the country so um i'm curious i always see it from the other side um but what was what was the process like working with the team here at rps in order to to figure out this well pump um did you have a lot of experience with well pumps or solar pumps before or was this kind of a first time going through this whole process this is the first time going through the whole process and everything from your videos which were awesome i watched them all on youtube cool. just figuring <laughs> out what to do um and then um the lady that helped me place the order for the pump and size the pump for me every experience with the company was phenomenal so uh, and so far we've been thrilled oh cool and so what are you you're pumping into i think i see back there some uh storage tanks they're like yes. stacked oh cool yes we we pump them into um i have a pumpkins growing out there by our corn maze and then for our garden we have 275 the uh, ibc tanks um, and then we have them gravity feed into a drip line and that drips underneath our mulch in our garden and out uh, into our rows of pumpkins out there. Oh, cool. And then I see there's eight panels there. So that's going to be like the RPS 800? Yes, the 800. Yeah, very nice. And then uh, do you remember how far you dropped that down? I'm we curious. have it at about 230. Okay. Uh, 230 feet. The well's 250. We're getting nice. about 10 gallons a minute. And um, the pressure coming out of that when it's nice and sunny is unbelievable. I mean, it's nice. I, I was expecting it to work, but not as well as it does. And um, <laughs> it's actually pretty much the same pressure that comes out of the hose for my parents' city water. And it's it's and we're pumping a good distance for the pumpkins too. 
and it fills the tanks well, up uh, pretty high, okay. about 30, 35 minutes for uh, 275 to fill up. Um, I also curious, uh, so during the install, you guys installed yourself. It sounds like the pit list, you had somebody come in and drill and get that that put yes. in. Um, but besides that, what was the most challenging challenging part of the install that, that you think? Uh, so I didn't listen to one part of your directions, which was test <laughs> the, uh, I just, oh, sure. just dropped it down. <laughs> The old bucket was, test. The old, <laughs> we, we were going to do it, and then we were in a hurry that day, so we're like, ah, oh, you know what? It's not that hard. We'll pull it back out. Yeah. So for about a day, I watched every troubleshooting video you had. I looked at the book. I, I just kept that dead end, dead end. We finally pulled it out, and the book had it blue, red, green. So I marked it down in the book to that, and then somehow in translation, I had one wire backwards. So the uh, was first, it unscrewed, okay. so I screwed it back on, dropped it back in, and it worked perfect. I should have done the bucket test. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's really um i usually try to take a picture of it because i'll never write it down and then i'll, I'll always be like oh I'll remember it and then uh and then i forget and so now i always take a picture before i do the splice of the final connection just to double check the splices on the pump were perfect it was just up at the controller i had it one wire backwards like the red was supposed to be with the green but the the book was a color off from what it was on the pump so that just threw me backwards but it that's again it was my fault for not following the bucket test any, any final things about the about the install the experience any anything else any uh even suggestions if you have them i would say listen you your company steered us right with everything from sizing and uh, what we would need for our application i would say if you're looking at them speak to the representatives and listen to them and you know figure out what you kind of want like what we did kind of figured we were going to use our water for and i think you guys helped us match a perfect pump for our application well awesome um well great to talk to you too and i hope we stay in touch in the future and maybe once you get some more you know the farm a little bit more developed we do a little tour or something and, and just kind of do a yes definitely a quick, like definitely. check in awesome okay awesome well thanks a lot for uh for coming on today